Hello again and welcome to my channel, Dr. Teacher Mom. Today we'll be looking at the, the play script and inspector calls. It's a GCSE text. Well, some key stage three students also stud study it. So we'll be looking at that. Our LO is to be able to evaluate the writer's use of stage directions to explore ideas in the play. So we'll be looking specifically at stage directions. Let's begin. So that's the text. Of course, there are different um, covers, but that's the cover that of the text that I have. So the page, if I make any page references, it will be from that text. OK, so before we go into looking at the stage direction, I just want to put a little context um, around the play. So our keyword is social class and the class system in, in Edwardian England at the time was as the pyramid shows. So at the very top, you have the upper class, then the middle class, then the lower middle class, then the working class, then the working poor, and then the underclass. So you can see the different divisions in society at that time. Inspector and Inspector Calls is set in 1912, but it is written in 1945. So right there, you can know that there will be the device of dramatic irony because everything that the characters are talking about in 1912, we would know that maybe it happened or it didn't happen. Um, in 1945. So there were in 1912, there were strong distinctions between the upper and lower classes. You had women who were considered to be subservient to men and all a well-off woman could do was get married. A poor woman was seen as cheap labor and World War One was two years after so when we see at the beginning Berlin's optimistic view that there would not be a war, it is completely wrong. And as I said before, it creates dramatic irony in the play. The ruling classes saw no need to change the status quo. They didn't want any change. They were well off. They were happy. So why change? In 1945, however, we had different things happening. There was a great desire for social change. It was immediately after World War II. Labour's Clement Attlee, he won a landslide victory over the conservative Winston Churchill. So class dis um, distinction had been greatly reduced as a result of two world wars. And as a result of the wars as well, women had earned a more valued place in society. We know that women were integral in um, making weaponry. They were also in, in the ones who were in industry when the men were at the war. World War II ended on the 8th of May 1945. So the play was written during that time. And people, um, after nearly six years of warfare and danger and uncertainty they really wanted changes to happen so let's look at the beginning of the play the opening where we see the stage directions at the beginning whilst i go through this i want you to think of these questions i put at the side so um, the questions are color coded. What are the purpose of the stage directions? So what, why do you think they're important to this play? And what does the distinction, the, what does the description fairly prosperous and fairly large suburban house tell us about the social status of the owners? Why do you think Priestley included this? in the stage directions and a few imposing but tasteless pictures what does this imply about the family and what impression does jb Priestley want to convey using setting so i'm going to read the first um, stage directions and then we'll go we'll discuss it 
dining room of a fairly large suburban house belonging to a fairly prosperous manufacturer. Notice that at the beginning he states that these people are not working class, they're fairly prosperous, they're into um, manufacturing, they're capitalists, they're owners and it's really important to note this distinction. It is a solidly built room with good solid furniture of the period. Upstage right there is an alcove with a heavy sideboard. A door from the alcove leads to the kitchen. Upstage left is a large double door used almost exclusively. A fireplace is along the right wall with a curtained window on either side. There are two leather armchairs on either side of the fireplace and downstage from it an ornate floor lamp and a small table with a telephone. A little upstage of centre is a solid but not too large dining room table with solid set of dining room chairs around it. A few imposing but tasteless pictures and engravings. The general effect is substantial and comfortable and old fashioned but not cosy and home like. So he really gives a clear description of where this is set. Remember that the setting you know it's this action takes place in this room in this house that's where the action of the play takes place so he sets the stage sets the scene these people are wealthy they're well off they have real substantial furniture he goes on to talk about the things that they own and it really gives an impression of their social class their social status as well and then we hear the, the description of the family within the house. So we're going to look at the characters and what does it imply about them and their social class and role within the family. We spoke about them being wealthy already. And he also uses the props of port, which is alcohol and champagne. And of course, at that time, those were expensive alcoholic beverages. So why does he use um that as a prop or we use those as a pro as props and what does the character description imply about mr berlin why is Priestley being so specific with the stage directions think about the audience and the purpose and remember it is this play does make social commentary about what was happening at the time and Priestley wanted a change he wanted a change in ideologies of the wealthy he wanted a change in the class divisions as well so the four berlins and gerald are seated at table with otter berlin at one end his wife at the other eric berlin downstage and sheila and gerald croft seated upstage Edna, a neatly dressed parlor maid so you know she, he puts this in they do have a maid so we know again that highlights their their social status in her late twenties is just clearing table which has no cloth of and then it talks about the plates it talks about the champagne glasses it talks about the champagne bottle and the port glasses are already on the table all five are in evening dress of the period the men in tails and white ties Arthur Berlin is a heavy looking, rather pretentious man in his middle 50s with fairly easy manners, but rather provincial in his speech. His wife is about 50, a rather cold woman and her husband's social superior. Sheila is a pretty girl in her early 20s, very pleased with the life and rather excited. Gerald Croft is an attractive chap, about 30, rather too manly to be a dandy, but very much the easy, well-bred young man about town. Eric is in his middle 20s, not quite as easy, half shy, half assertive, at the, the moment, they have all had a good dinner, are celebrating a special occasion and are pleased with themselves. So the description of Mrs. Berlin, who is the social superior to her husband. So as we can see that they made a connection just like Sheila and Gerald are doing a business connection, you know, because of course the upper classes married to other wealthy people. So they made a social uh, marriage basically. And we can see that 
So Mr. Berlin married his social superior. Now, what does the phrase please with themselves imply? Is it foreshadowing a comment on social class? And I want you to think about that as we continue. So I have done a piece of model for you. So we've looked at the stage directions. The stage directions clearly instruct um, the actors how to move, what to wear, and it also gives um, the, the audience an idea of the characters and, and their personalities. Remember that the play was written for the stage, not for the page. So therefore the stage directions are really important for the actors. So the question we're looking at is how the importance of stage directions in the play. So I've done a Peter analysis and I have shown you where each part of the Peter is for your reference. So P, the point, is going to clearly tell me what I'm writing about. So it's going to have my thesis sentence. Priestley uses very specific stage directions to show the importance of the setting and lighting. So those are the two key things I'm going to focus on, the setting and the lighting. The setting is constant. All actions happen in the same place. Priestley describes the scene in detail at the opening of Act 1 so that the audience has the immediate impression of a heavily comfortable house. So that quote was taken from what I've just read, but the, the second quote that I and the third one that I've used is in Act 1. And if you read it, I didn't want to use the exact quote um, because I want you really to think about, so my model is a challenge, is, it's an exemplar, but I really need you to challenge yourself and not just look at this model. I want you to then unpick for yourselves and get your evidence. So I chose two different um, pieces of evidence later on in the stage directions. So with pink and intimate lighting, which becomes brighter and harder when the inspector arrives. The comparative adjective, so your tease your technique, adject is brighter and harder. And then I go to E, which is the explanation, suggests that lighting is used to reflect the mood of the play and depict the inspector as a social conscience who will focus on social responsibility and hold each character to account. Remember I told you that this, the purpose of this play was to create some form of change, accountability, have people really think about what was happening in society. And then my last um, part of my Peter, my reader effect. This makes the reader appreciate and understand the social context of the play and also heighten high the theme of social responsibility because we're all members of one body. So what I've done is really try to get a range of quotes. So even though I'm looking at stage directions, I wanted to link it to the other parts of the play to show my overall understanding. So if you have forgotten, P to stands for point. So the P, the first P is your point. What is the point of your essay? So you state it in the first P. Then you need to give your evidence. And remember, we don't have to say my evidence is. You just give the evidence. Then the, your technique is your subject terminology. So did the writer use a simile, a metaphor, an adjective, etc. And next comes your explanation of the evidence linked to the question asked. And your last one is your R, your reader effect. What does it make the reader think? feel or believe. Those are the three things I always use to create or to create the reader effect, that last bit. What does it make the reader think? What does it make the reader feel? Or how does it make the reader feel? And what does it make the reader believe? Okay, now it's your turn. I want you to look at the stage direction that I've put in this um, tutorial 
and answer the question how does Priestley use stage directions in the play how does he use it and the effects created if you have a copy of the play you can like I did in my model embed um, quotes that you know throughout your response so it's really developed and detailed and as usual when you have a go at doing this essay um, question it could be just a paragraph you have done please comment below and let me know how you did